Disclaimer! I'm just gonna start off this video by mentioning that this kit right here is technically a bootleg or a knockoff. I'm not gonna get into the rights and wrongs of whether or not you should buy these or whether you should not, that is up to you, but just consider that buying knockoff products can actually harm the hobby that you love and I love, so keep that in mind. This to me is just an experiment and a little bit of an exercise in curiosity, that is about it. Of course, if it ever becomes available, the metal build that this is based on, as a full release kit, once again, I'm totally buying it, but hey, let's check it out. Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at something a little bit different and a little bit the same because this is a Gundam kit, but that's not a normal looking Gundam kit box right there. Actually, what we should have is a little bit of a nice old, come on marker, a little bit of a, a little bit of a one of these guys, one of these, there we go, there we go, a little bit of a. A little bit of a skull and a crossbone, right? Like that, like there. Hip, up, up. Absolutely beautiful. Give him a little bit of a, a V there, too. So, yeah, this is a bootleg. <laughs> this is a big looking bootleg. I don't know how this is going to turn out. This is the Dragon Momoko Strike Freedom. There's a picture. And it is based on the Metal Build Strike Freedom, which is pretty much almost impossible to get right now. Now, this is a big box. There is a standard Master Grade box, and this one back here is a little bit thicker. But hey, let's take an old peep inside and see what we got. So honestly, as I don't know how this video is going to go, I'm going to try something a little bit different and I'm going to do a little bit of a build log with every step I get through on this because I'm not sure if I'm going to go all the way. I've put on one, two, three, essentially four parts so far and each one of them, well, everything but the neck has fitted like absolute arse. I've been chopping pieces off and gluing it just to get pieces together. I have it clamped now, there's still going to be a massive seam. This, ooh, man. I guess we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm checking in again, and uh, I thought I had saw it all when it comes to model kits, but this, these instructions, these are not good. So this is on paper, I'll just mention that, but yeah. E14 right here, that, what, the size, E14 wasn't that size, it was a whole lot smaller than that. So now I actually get to this point right here, which uh, involves putting on E110. And there's no peg to attach E110 to. E110 is meant to attach in right here, but there is no peg. That is because this part right here, which is off the A runner, which I just happen to match up visually with what is meant to be here. Uh, yeah, you were meant to have attached that, so I have to take it all fucking apart again. Absolute shit. So this right here is the next build check-in on this thing, and I'm kind of getting up to speed about what you have to do here, but this is not what I expected at all. So I knew there'd be a little bit of fitting issues and all of that with this particular kit, but what I didn't expect is you would have to drill absolutely every single peg hole on this. Every single one of them. So it's taken me a whole day to get this far. The metal frame is the biggest issue. Nothing fits on it. Nothing whatsoever. You have to drill, fit, take it off, shape, drill, fit again. I wish I'd known that straight away and I wouldn't have screwed up the armor on the waist right there. Besides that though, I think everything's come together pretty well and what's killing me is I hate building it. Hate it. But by God, is this thing beautiful. 
So now finally getting those wings on and these were a little bit of an issue, not too bad. The central aspect of both of these was a little bit problematic because once I threw on the wings, those parts started to separate. This might be because I drilled it too much, maybe they're like this anyway, but there was quite a bit of an issue getting everything to clip together. So I did have to separate the parts out a lot and ended up having to glue and clamp it. It's fine now that it's all glued and that seems to be this situation with this kit. There's going to be a lot of drilling and making stuff bigger and smaller to make sure they clip together and then gluing to make up for when you've done it a little too much. But still, there is no denying this is ridiculously beautiful. Like, even though there is a lot of issues with the build and I did screw up some aspects early on when I didn't really know what I was doing with this, it still looks absolutely phenomenal. Would I do it again? Maybe. So needless to say, this kit right here isn't necessarily beginner friendly. You do need some degree of experience and a whole bunch of tools. So if you want a kit that is beginner friendly and doesn't require that many tools, I recommend the high grade ball. Twin set. So high grade balls. And speaking of tools for balls, this video was brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. I hate body hair. I really hate it. That's why I shave it off. All of it. And you can too with the new Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof electric trimmer. And now you can get the ultimate Manscaped experience when you purchase their new Performance Package 4.0 bundle. It's the all in one kit that has everything you need for that perfect grooming experience those perfect hairless balls. The Lawnmower 4.0 is packing replaceable ceramic blades with skin safe technology, a built in LED light, and it is waterproof so you can use it in the shower for those perfect hairless balls. It also includes wireless charging and a new travel lock feature. After that shower, slap on some of that quick absorbing, clear drying, moisturizing, manscaped crop preserver ball deodorant to maintain those perfect hairless balls. With the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray with cooling aloe vera and anti-inflammatory properties, not even a hot summer midday slump will threaten those perfect hairless balls. Manscaped is much more than just a ball trimmer company. The new Performance Package 4.0 bundle includes the new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer, because the only thing worse than jocks full of a hairy hot dog swamp is a tickly nose hair every time you breathe. When you opt in for the full Performance Package 4.0, you can enroll in the Peak Hygiene Plan and get supply drops of your favorite products right to your door. And for a limited time, you can also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Briefs. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off, free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use the promo code MECCA at checkout. Your balls will thank you. And yeah, there we go, my first ever bootleg Gundam kit and just to kind of summarize before I get into the review about the build I don't even know what I was expecting getting into this the only kind of off-brand third-party Gundam kit I've ever built is Zero Gravity's The Judge which is pretty much a perfect model kit and it's built from the ground up this is essentially a well a deconstructed metal build strike freedom repackaged as a model kit and honestly I have to say Dragon Momoko have done a fairly good job. Like I will say at first that I was dying when I was building this. It just was not working out. If I knew then what I know now it would have been a whole different experience. This was probably the most challenging model kit I've ever built mainly because I had no idea how to go about it. I wasn't really prepped. I like to go into these things blind. It's a lot more fun that way. However, I do feel like if I built it a second time, I wouldn't have the issues I have with this. It is not perfect by any means. My build right here has a lot of issues, especially in the initial stages of the build. I started with the torso and that's where all the problems are. I'll talk about that when we get into the actual review. But yeah, this did feel a bit tedious at first just because you have to do so much correcting. So if you are going to build something like this, you need a pin vise with at least one three millimeter drill bit. You probably need a two millimeter and a one millimeter as well just to make your life a lot easier because what you need to do is just fix the width of most of the peg holes. You will definitely need a hobby knife because some parts will need to be carved. You will need a set of decent files because some more parts will need to be filed and carved and you will need some glue and some clamps. Now that is more so to fix the mistakes you make yourself but there are some parts I just like to separate on this you may want to close up and keep closed. But on the whole I'm surprised to say after all of this and especially you know it took me a good day and a half full day and a half to finish. So I'm actually surprised to say in the end I am impressed. There are Bandai's Master Grade kits that have found more tedious than this. Pretty much old Bandai Master Grades I find 
mind-numbing to build. The only ones I've built are the Master Grade Easy 8 and the Master Grade G Gundam kits. Those numb my mind to build because there's no fun and you know while building them you're going to end up with a super subpar model kit. But even though the build on this is quite difficult and you have to like fix every single part while putting it together, there's a point when you realize this is going to look kick ass and that kind of gets you through it. But anyway, let's get into the review portion. So anyway, jumping right on into absolutely everything that comes with the Dragon Momoko Strike Freedom, or we could call the High Resolution Strike Freedom, or Metal Build Replica. As well as that, we get the full action base and stand, a whole bunch of dragoons, the two beam rifles, a pair of beam sabers, a whole bunch of pink beam effects we're using with the dragoons, a bunch of glitzy hands, that's not even including the fists attached to it right now, some gigantic wings of light, these are incredible looking. A whole ton of extra bits and parts and stand related things I'm not going to really mention individually right now, we'll see them later. Next up then we've got a bunch of effect parts, that is two beam shields, one is a little better than the other, I'll talk about that later too. And we've got a whole bunch of these colored beam effects. Now these I don't think came with anything like the metal build figure itself or the wings of light for the metal build which were sold separately, these look more like what we would have seen with the Master Grade. And I will never forget the comment put on the video of my review of those effect parts with the Master Grade that says these look like condiment beams. We've got our ketchup, our mustard, and our relish. Last up then here we've got a whole bunch of water slide decals and stickers, but once again we will take a look at those later on. For now, let's get right on into the aesthetics. So now jumping into that full 360 degree spin and as usual I will pop up the image of what this Strike Freedom looks like on the side but this looks a whole lot different. The metal build which this is based on is a very stylized figure and this of course has the same sort of style. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it yet, I probably have, but just in case I haven't, this is all centered around a metal inner frame. So it almost has a bit of a high resolution kind of vibe. And the plastic is sort of the same too. It's that same kind of shiny, glossy plastic you do see in Bandai's high resolution kits, but not really as brittle feeling. But visually, this thing is ridiculously cool. It is not without its issues. I did have a lot of fitting issues with this kit, but that was early on in the build before I knew what I was actually doing. So as you can see, there is a seam on the waist and I had massive issues up on the shoulder. I'll mention that a little bit in more detail later on. But otherwise, visually, this looks insane. We've got multiple shades of white on here, or should I say we've got a warm light gray and a cool light gray on the white to break it up. The gold is in multiple colors. I will mention that the inner frame on this was a little bit on the corroded side out of the box, so you can still see that on some of the joints. This really isn't all that noticeable from a distance, but up close you will notice it. The rest of the gold on this kit that is in that metal die cast inner frame, that is all painted and the paint is fantastic on this. Actually the molding of all of the plastic is pretty much perfect. This is beautiful. The only issues is the fitting, but the actual outer armor looks spectacular and I guess that is what matters in the end. But anyway, let's dive in a little bit closer and see some more of the detail that's on this. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the aspects that gave me a bit of trouble and those vents up on the shoulders were the first of it. The second then of course are these big old gaps in the waist right there. So basically I just started out treating this kit right here like it was well a standard Bandai Gundam kit which it most certainly is not. So usually with a Bandai kit all you need is a nipper and something to clean up the nubs. That's pretty much it. Sometimes you can get by with just a nipper but not this right here. On top of that, I needed a whole set of files, some sanding boards, a needle nose pliers, a hobby knife, plastic cement, and I wish I could get the Tamiya stuff because I hate this tube, and something I've never needed with a Gundam kit before, a pin vise, aka a small little hand drill. Now this is what I needed more than anything else with this particular kit. Pretty much zero of the pegs in this fit into the holes. That's because the holes are a little bit narrower than they need to be. They are all 3mm, 2mm or 1mm in diameter, so if you've got something like this, it should be no problem. But there's a lot of trial and error. So if I had known that from the start, I wouldn't have gotten those problems because everything from the legs, the arms, the head, the backpack, 
All of that was fine once I realized I needed to do all of that. So it is the metal frame on this that does not agree with the plastic. That's your biggest issue, attaching the plastic to the metal. But yeah, once I got past all of that and got into the right mind frame of how you needed to build this thing, in the end it turned it out fantastic. Honestly, for a bootleg or a knock-off Gundam, this is more than I could ever expect. Like, in my mind, a bootleg would be terrible, but Dragon Momoko did a good job. I'll also mention that for me, bootlegs are a bit of a grey area, I don't really care either way, I don't want to hurt the hobby, of course, but Bandai will not re-release the Metal Build Strike Freedom, and uh, if they do, I'll happily buy it, but I'm not paying a grand for it. So also included in the box, we do get a bunch of stickers, that is these right here. So this sticker sheet right here entails is just a bunch of gold highlights. So I'm going to pop up a picture of the metal build and you'll see it does have a lot more exterior gold on it than this kit right here has. That's what these do. Besides that, we've got your regular old stickers for up on the head cameras, which I did use. These do look nice. We have clear parts underneath if you do prefer that and we have this standard eye sticker. The, this was a little tough to apply, in the same sort of way Bandai kits are, but the plastic section that is under the eyes was cocking up a little bit compared to the actual Gundam muzzle. It did need a little bit of sanding and, well, fitting like the rest of the kit, so eventually it turned out fine. So next up in here we don't have one, we've got two sheets of water slide decals. The first of which is Fairly standard water slide decals. I have not tried these out, so I can't give you the gist on whether they're good or not. On a quick zoom on in, the detailing is quite nice and these look pretty cool. The second set look even cooler. These are metallic. This might be hard to see on the video, but we've got silver ones up top, yellowy gold ones down bottom, and these look incredible. Once again, I cannot talk about the quality of these per se, but they do look interesting. And the most interesting aspect about them is, and you know, when something's a bootleg, you kind of expect some sketchy aspects to it, but it looks like they cut a logo out of the bottom right of these. If you know where these are from originally, or if there's a reason that's cut out, I need to know. Please drop it in the comments. That's just weird. So I know when it comes to kits, especially new and unusual style ones on the channel, you guys like some size comparison. So there it is side by side with the Master Grade RX-78 2 3.0. So it's in and around the standard size of a regular Master Grade Gundam, as a metal build would be. Next up there it is side by side with the Master Grade Freedom Gundam 2.0, which is something I thought it would look really cool beside, because the Master Grade Freedom 2.0 is a redesign in a kind of metal build sort of way, just it's a Master Grade, not a metal build of course. They're both edgy, stylistic redesigns of the original concepts, and that makes them work together really, really well. Sadly, I do not have either the Master Grade Strike Freedom Gundam or the Metal Build Strike Freedom Gundam to compare this to, so, well, I just can't do that, I guess. Moving on. So before we load this beast up with its metric ton of accessories, let's do the articulation. And just mentioning the build first, this does have a metal internal frame, but does have some minor issues, but for the most part, it's quite solid. It's the ankles that tend to give up on me the most, but not all the time, just sometimes. This is a hefty kit, so that's not so bad. The neck right here is triple jointed, which is pretty cool. That is a ball joint up top, a standard forward and back hinge below the neck, and we have this cool rocking side to side movement that rocks the whole collar section. At the shoulder, we've got a little bit of forward and back. There is the arm all the way up and down. As usual, if something pops off, I will leave it off. That was a bit of the shoulder. We do have full 360 rotation here, but it is blocked by the wings. And the shoulder armor can move independently to the arm, but it's more of an up and down towards the back as opposed to the standard up and down towards the head that we would usually see. Full 360 spin at the upper arm. We do have double jointed elbow here, but this is terrifyingly stiff. I lost another part, but it is a decent bend, but super, super stiff. The wrist on this is pretty cool because we do have a full hinge below the actual wrist, which gives us a little bit extra. The wrist itself is your standard ball joint attachment. Moving to the torso now, and we do have a little bit of an ab crunch here. I'm not going to force it too much because I don't know what will happen, but this is why I can get out of it comfortably. As for the rotation, it feels like you're going to get the whole way around, but I have heard horror stories about breaking this particular joint, so I'm not going to push it either. The front skirting armor here is attached via ball joints. I lost one, but that's just because of the angle of the upper body. The other one here is absolutely fine, so we got some up and down. 
The side skirts here have a lot going on because of those rail guns. The standard movement is some back and forth rotation as well. The rail guns can fold out with multiple different points of articulation, pretty cool. And when you want to move these to the back, all you have to do is drop down the butt flap like so and they can move back and you've got an attachment point for the beam rifles. What the butt can do itself? Well, these are standard ball and socket joints so it can move up and down. And this did fall off on me and I'll mention, I drilled the peg holes a little too big, so that's my fault. Moving down a little further and inside the waist right here, we do have a dropping mechanism for the hip joint. Now, I'm not going to force this because as you can see, it does look a little rough and feels extremely stiff. So we'll see what we can get without going too nutty. So as for those kicks, there's the kick all the way up to the front, which is pretty good and not that stiff. But when we get out to the back, it doesn't go that far before it locks up. Finally then, as for the splits, this is as far as the legs will go before once again, they lock up. As for the knee bend, it's very, very, very nice, double jointed, and while you bend the knee, the angle of the knee armor does shift slightly. Around the back on the leg, we've got a couple of thruster flaps that move out and in. Getting that foot on the ground now for the functional movement at the ankle, and to the front, it is ridiculous. And I mean absolutely ridiculous. This is what it would be like, almost touching the ground. All the way out to the back then, and this is a little bit more limited because the armor clashes a bit, and the side to side is pretty damn good. Moving around to the wings now, and these are pretty simple, but at the same time quite effective. So you've got rotation of the entire wing units on either side. They can flap back and forth like this, the wings then can rotate on their own. This little part up top can pivot as well. And finally, the wings can open up like so. Now let's check out those accessories. So jumping right back to the beginning of the review and there is absolutely everything that comes in the box, which is a lot. So let's check it all out. So we're gonna start off with the stand and all I can say is this feels very similar to what you would get with a metal build figure, if not a little bit more rubbery. I actually expect this to, well, be a complete wreck, but it is not. This is all the features you'd see on a metal build stand, which is the locking mechanism up top to change the angle of the attachment arm. We've got an arm down front, which can change the entire angle of the stand itself, and then a extension section up top. All of these can lock. We have two attachment arms in here. That's one that just straight sticks into the strike freedoms back, and we've got another one at a slight bit of an angle, I guess for shooting poses. Attaching the strike freedom onto it is really simple, it just slots on like so, and once again, this is quite sturdy. A little bit bouncy, but very sturdy. As for the hands that we have in here, we have a pair of each of what I'm about to say, and that is the fists that have been on here the whole time, a pair of widespread dynamic hands, a pair of wide holding hands that, as far as I know, are for supporting the beam rifle, a pair of hands for holding onto the beam rifles, a pair of hands for holding onto the beam sabers, and what I can only guess is a pair of hands for holding onto the beam sabers at a, and, well, a slashing angle. Swapping these out is very simple, just be aware of knocking off the cuff armor. Next up in here, we've got a pair of beam sabers, and these have a very nice pink blade. These are very easy to attach into the hands, no problems whatsoever. When they're not in use, just pop out the beams, and you can store them simply on the side skirts, and everything works as it should. As usual, these can be attached bottom to bottom like so for a double-ended beam saber. Next up are the beam rifles, and out of pretty much everything in this box, these are what I had some of the most trouble with, especially the one that goes on the front of the combination beam rifle. That is because it just, a lot of the parts just did not fit together. I had to do a lot of drilling, a lot of gluing, and still it ended up a little bit on the funky side. From a distance, you wouldn't really notice. So it's not the biggest deal. Attaching these into the hands is simple. They just slide into the hands. They're a little bit wonky while in there. They could be a little more secure. But once you have it in a pose, they don't really tend to cause much trouble. So these look good. And sometimes at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Next up, you can combine the two rifles together. In order to do so, you take one of them and pull the back segment out like so. This works quite seamlessly and I'm impressed. The front rifle then, all you have to do is pop down this section here at the site. Lengthen the front aspect of it like so, and then the rear part here opens up like this out to the side so the other rifle can slot into it. And I'm surprised this actually worked without falling apart. This built quite poorly, and honestly, I didn't really do that great of a job, so huh, it worked. So anyway, there they are, both together, both attached, supported in that supporting hand. And this attached on well, it's holding it fine, and it looks really damn good. This looks incredible. This is huge, and there is a Master Grade Gundam Age just for comparison. A big gun. 
When these rifles are not in use, just like before, you can move those rail guns back out of the way, expose this hole, and you can store them on there. So it's about time we moved onto those dragoons, and we've got four big, four small, so let's get them attached. Attaching these is actually quite simple. You just push them all the way into the C joint first until they click, then push them up onto the gold segment, they attach flush, no issues whatsoever. So there is what this looks like with every single one of them attached. And the angle, the design of these, well, I was gonna say they're pretty damn cool, but I guess they were designed by the metal build. They still look good though. You can also just pop these ever so slightly so you can see the gold internal segments like what you're seeing right now. But of course, it's time to check out these absolutely ridiculous effect parts. Once again, this is based off the metal build, and you can get these for the metal build just in case you're thinking about that. So to attach them, it isn't necessarily all that easy. They do attach in the same sort of way as the dragoons, but at first they did feel a little tight, it's hard to get a grip on them, but once you get the knack of how you do it, it's not the worst. They attach in quite well, add a whole lot of extra weight and size to this particular model kit, but we do have a whole bunch of other stand related bits in here. So I'm attaching this whole frame to the back, which supports the wings and actually has some attachment points for the dragoons too, which is pretty cool. So around in the back of this frame section, we do have these big old arms that we can attach these extra little adapters to, which we can attach those dragoons to, to show them activated and in flight and ready to wreak some havoc. This looks intense. This is a pretty cool display so far. And we've got, well, a whole bunch more to add. We do have a beam shield in here in order to attach it. You just pop off this red little segment here, which can be a little bit tough to get off, and then just pop on the beam shield like so. This is pretty cool. It's double layered. A thinner layer on the inside, a thicker layer on the outside. The paintwork looks good, and it's looking pretty vigorous. So if this wasn't enough, you can actually just pop out the tops of all of the dragoons, both the large ones and the smaller ones, and we've got some effects in here. First off, we've got a small beam effect for using in the small dragoons, and then a large, vigorous looking beam effect for using in the large dragoons. We have enough for every single dragoon, but I'm just showing these two right here, for example. Once again, the pink plastic in here glows and looks good. And once again, if that is not enough, it's time to get onto the condiment effect parts. And first up, we've got the relish. The relish beams attach onto all of the dragoons. This is what they look like attached, and honestly, these look pretty good. If you get in really close, there is little sparkles or glitter inside of the plastic, and we have enough of these for each of the Dragoons as well as both beam rifles. So yeah, that's a lot of shots of relish. Next up in here, then, we've got the massive ketchup blast from the chest. You do need to swap out the segment inside of the chest, which is a pain in the butt. A little bit difficult to do, but once you get the gold part out, you put in this jelly yellow colored one and then stick on in that massive blast of ketchup. Once you've that attached in, you can pull out those rail guns once again from this side skirts and then you attach on the big old mustard blast. Now, these come in two pieces. That is a large part that attaches onto the muzzle of the railgun and then the longer part. As far as I know, the metal build never came with these particular ones and these look more like what we would have seen with the Premium Bandai Master Grade Freedom 2.0 box. So I'm not sure if they made these themselves or what. I'll also mention that the relish beams that attach onto the rifles don't attach on that great. They're a little jank and likely to fall off. But besides that, everything does attach on fairly okay. So anyway, there is what it looks like with every single one of those beams attached. And this is crazy. This is mad. Honestly, I prefer the kind of beam blades myself because this is an absolute mess of color. But if you're into this, if you like this, this will make one hell of display. There is the Master Grade RX-78 II 3.0 for comparison. But yeah, that is it right there for the review. And what can I say? This is very interesting. I'm not going to give it any kind of grading or tier because this isn't necessarily Gompla. So just to, I guess, talk about the bottom line about this kit, it is very hard to put together, so not beginner friendly. You will need a lot more tools than your standard Gompla build by Bandai. But if you are experienced with more normal classic model kits that need a lot more drilling and cutting and gluing, then you'll be right at home with this. I'll also mention that the metal frame is the biggest issue with this. It is great that it is heavy, it holds together great, but it is not, well, that friendly with the plastic, so you need to work on it a lot. But once you get everything on, I've had nothing really fall off besides things I've knocked off myself. It is honestly a pretty good model kit. I'm shocked, I expected the bootleg to be a lot worse than what I'm seeing here. This is quite good. 
But yeah, at this point, I'm really starting to ramble. There's not really much else to say. So as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam, Gunpla, and Gundam-related reviews. And I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lawrence C. Hack, Joseph Kuklock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official.